Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our third example of how to work with a mesh analysis method when we have both voltage and current sources. So here's a slightly more complicated equation, or I should say a slightly more complicated circuit that we're trying to solve. Again, we could start off by assigning currents to each of the branches, but as the circuits get more complicated, you may want to wait until the end to apply that particular step. So we'll jump straight to step number two. Let's assign the mesh currents for each of the three meshes in here. So we have our first mesh, call that I1. Here's the current for the second mesh, I2. And the current for the third mesh, I3. Here we have on this branch a current source, so temporarily we're going to exclude this from the analysis. We're just simply going to take it out as if that is not there. What we need to do then is go to step three and apply the Kirchhoff voltage law to obtain equations, but in this case we're only going to be able to obtain two equations instead of three. The first equation is going to be obtained by going around this loop right here, which is a, a mesh that has both current I1 and I2 in it, and then we have a second loop coming from that uh, mesh right there, I3. Starting at this corner right here, lower left corner, going across the voltage source, 8. Then coming around here, we have a voltage drop across this resistor, minus 2 I1, and I should say I1 right there, I forgot the 1 there, so I1. Then coming around the corner, oh, by the way, I can't forget about I3, that there's a voltage rise relative to I3, because we're traveling in this direction, that's against the current relative to I3, I must subtract I3 from that, and notice that if I multiply a negative 2 times a minus I3, I get a positive 2I3. Come around the corner, following this right here, we have a voltage drop relative to I2, minus 4 times I2, but I have a voltage rise relative to I3, because it's against the current of I3, minus I3, Again, minus 4 times a minus I3 gives us a plus 4 I3. Coming around this way, we have a voltage drop relative to I2, minus 8 I2. And then we come all the way back to the original point, which is equal to 0. There's our first equation. Our second equation will be obtained by going around this loop, starting at the corner up here. I come across a 2-ohm resistor that will be a voltage drop. That's minus 2 times the current I3. Coming around the corner across the forum resistor, that's a voltage drop, minus 4 I3, but we have a voltage rise relative to I2. I subtract I2 from that. Minus 4 times a minus I2 gives us a plus 4 I2. Coming around here, we have a voltage drop relative to I3, minus 2. I3, but we have a voltage rise relative to I1, minus I1, and then we get all the way around, and that must add up to zero. There's the two equations. I know we have three unknowns, but we'll get the third unknown in just a moment. Let's simplify these two equations by having only I1, I2, and I3 expressed once. We have a minus 2I1, a minus 4I2, and a minus 8I2, that's a minus 12I2 a minus a plus 2i3 and a plus 4i3, that's a plus 6i3. And that adds up to, when we bring the 8 across the other side, a minus 8. Quickly check in the equations to make sure we have this correctly. We have plus 8 minus 2i1 plus 2i3. We have a minus 4i2 and a plus 4i3. Uh, I and a minus 8i2. That's good. And over here we have a minus 2i3. That's okay. Minus 4i3 plus 4i2. And we have a minus 2i3 and a plus 2i1. We're good. Those are good equations. So now we simplify the first equation to this. Second equation, we have a plus 2i1. I keep forgetting to put the subscripts 1 there. It's 2i1. For I2, we have a plus 4I2, and for I3, a minus 2, a minus 4, and a minus 2, that's minus 8I3, and that adds up to 0. Now I have the two equations and the three unknowns. What I need now is incorporate the branch here that I eliminated at first. 
I realize here that we have an I2 entering this branch point, so I'm going to look at this branch point. I have a 4 amp current entering, an I2 entering, and an I1 leaving which means that the current leaving, I1, equals the sum of the currents entering, which is 4 plus I2. I now have a relationship between I1 and I2. I can then plug that into my equation here to eliminate I1. If I do that, I get the following. Those two equations now become minus 2 times I1, which is 4 plus I2, minus 12 I2, plus 6i3 equals 8, or a minus 8. Okay. The second equation, again, substituting for i1, 4 plus i2. I get 2 times 4 plus i2, plus 4i2, minus 8i3 equals to 0. Now we're going to simplify those two, two equations, two unknowns, with i2 and i3 only appearing in ones. Minus 2i2 minus 12i2 is minus 14i2. A plus 6i3 equals a minus 8, move the other side, equals a plus 8, add it to minus 8, that gives me 0. So the minus 8s cancel out. For the second equation, I end up with 2i2 plus 4i2, that's 6i2. And a minus 8i3. And 2 times 4 is 8, move to the other side, becomes a minus 8. Now I have two equations of two unknowns, which I should be able to solve. What I think I'm going to do is multiply the top by 8 and the bottom by 6. So I'm multiplying the whole equation, both left and right side, by 8 for the top one, and the bottom one, I'm going to multiply times 6. I realize that this becomes a positive 48, 6 times 8 is 48, and this becomes a negative 48, 6 times 8 is negative 48. I add those together, the i3s drop out, so when I do that, I get the following. Let me come up here, because I have a little bit more room. Multiply this times 8, 8 times 14, that's 32 added 8, and that's minus 112, i2. 6 times 8, 48, plus 48 i3 equals to 0. The second equation, 6 times 6, that's 36 I2 minus 48 I3 is equal to minus 48. If I add the two equations together, there we go. When we add the two equations together, we get the following 112 minus 36, that would be 64 plus 12, 74, 76. So minus 76. Add that to that, that's 112, that's correct. I2, the I3s drop out equals minus 48, which means that I2 can be found by dividing 48 by 76. 48 divided by 76 equals, we get 0 0.632 amps. Now we have our first of the three mesh currents. Now we go to one of these two equations. I can go ahead and grab this one right here and substitute I2, what I2 is equal to in here, which means that the equation now becomes six times, instead of I2, we write 0 0.632 minus 8I3 equals minus 8, or minus 8I3 is equal to minus 8 minus the product of those two, 3.789, add 8 to that, plus 8, and divide by 8. And we get I3 is equal to a positive 1.474 amps. So now we have I2 right here, we have I3 right here, all we need now is I1. And here I can go and write I1 as 4 plus I2. Coming down here, we have I1 equals 4 plus I2, which is 4 plus I2 was 0 0.632 amps, which means that I1 is equal to 4.632 amps. And there's our third mesh current, which allows us to find the current in each of the branches. If you now want to assign the current, for example, I 
in this branch right here, that would simply be I1 minus I3. If we want to assign a current in this branch right here, that would simply be I2 minus I3 and so forth. So that would make it easier to find the currents in any of the branches once you find the three mesh currents. And that's how we do that.